Greetings, welcome back friends, family, and foes to Asafo Academic Lectures. In this video, I wanted to talk about this quick update with the whole Africa Bimbada saga. So this site is from Layla Wells, covering the whole situation in Africa Bimbada, Zulu Nation, and Child SA. And the update I wanted to talk about is Layla Wills is suing the Zulu Nation, Ronald Savage, for defamation. So let's go here. If you don't know anything that's going on about African Bambada and SA against children, you should go double back to my playlist, Hip Hop's Biggest Secret. It will get you up to date to everything that's been going on. But essentially, Zulu Nation of Africa Bimbada's music group that has been um, some of the people, not all, but some of the people have been complicit in his actions. And Ronald Savage is actually a victim turned turncoat who flipped his story and said he was abused from being he wasn't abused, saying he didn't make it up. So Ronald Savage is essentially a traitor because he knows the person African Bimbada is and decides not to stand by his story. So that's why people, Layla Wells, a lot of people that's uh, been following the case just got to silence my phone. That's why... A lot of people following the case look at Ronald Savage as a traitor because who comes out and gives a whole story for years and then takes everything back. Understand that Ronald Savage has some issues with people not believing his story, but that doesn't give him the right to go and say that he's not a victim. But anyways... Lila Wells sues Zulu Nation, Ronald Savage. So let's get into this. This is what independent media looks like. If people think mainstream media was going to cover this case. Huh. Yeah, that's part of the problem, I think, a little bit. How ready the media was willing to push this under the rug. So Layla Wells did an entire documentary to shed some light on the entire situation. There was a 40 parts called Trapped in a Trapped in a Culture. But this is the latest update. Latest update. Because you would think if none of these allegations are true, African Bambara and the Zulu Nation would sue themselves for defamation for anybody has spoken out spoken up about the case but let me get into it enough talk so this was april 21st 2023 so this is actually about almost a month old already today metropolis publisher and journalist Layla wells filed a lawsuit in circuit court of cook county against the universal zulu nation ronald savage Mikey Benson and others believed to be Zulu Nation members for several offenses, namely falsely falsely accusing her of soliciting Savage into a civil conspiracy. So that has been Ronald Savage's claims as of lately that he was coerced to do the documentary. So we see here it was actually 44 parts, my bad. You see here, this is one of the interviews Ronald Savage did, 35 minutes. And then there was another one that he did over here, part 10, 22 minutes. So he did an interview twice for about an hour, almost an hour, talking about his story right and now he's trying to walk back everything plus all the other countless interviews that he did so far about the entire situation 
that's why if you're not cut up, it's better not to try and form your own judgment without having any facts and actually learn the case because this is not a small case. It's a very big case. So to automatically dismiss it, I think it's very irresponsible, but it's been crazy. It's been very, very crazy, this entire situation. So that's where namely falsely accusing Layla Wills of soliciting Savage into a civil conspiracy against Africa Bimbara. Nobody forced Ronald Savage to come out Ronald Savage initially came out first about the story to the New York Daily News, right? That was separate from Layla Wells when it first started. Layla Wells didn't come till a little bit after this entire situation to come out with her documentary. Let me continue on. The complaint also says that members of the Zulu Nation engaged in a deliberate and malicious defamation campaign against her because she protested against the Zulu Nation's perceived financial interest in the Universal Hip Hop Museum. You know, this is very light because the Zulu Nation has been defaming her way before the whole saga with the Universal Hip Hop Museum. But I digress. Wells, who has been covering and investigating the child abuse accusations against Bambada and the Zulu Nation for seven years, co-founded Hip Hop Stands with Survivors, after the group held a protest against the Universal Hip Hop Museum, Wills said in the complaint, the defendants launched a coordinated defamation and disinformation campaign against her and the group. Savage sent the following statement to the media, wrote it on social media, in emails, and sent on videos. Layla then told me that I should tell the lawyer that Bambada took me across state lines and essayed me which was um, trafficking. I told her that he never did it, to which she replied, I know, but we can get Ben Bada on federal charges. I thought to myself, wow, she wants me to lie to the lawyer. I spoke with the lawyer, but I refused to follow Layla's plan. So this whole idea that <laughs> she concocted this story about trafficking is incredible because even before Layla Wills came into the picture, Ronald Savage was going from interview to interview, talking from doing one-on-one -on -one interviews, talking about the entire situation. So this idea that Layla Wills came in and concocted this entire idea is complete BS. I'm going to continue. I don't want to go off. On April 3rd, 2023, Savage also made an illegal and false claim with the United States Patent and Trademark Office declaring hip hop stands with survivors as his own and applied for the trademark using Defendant Benson's T-neck New Jersey address. Defendant Benson operates a nonprofit called Mail Awareness with rapper Ice-T and uses the same T-neck address for the organization. Benson is a co-founder of the Universal Zulu Nation and a co-founder of the Universal Hip Hop Museum, along with Africa Bambada. So this is just dirty. This is just a dirty move by Mickey Benson, who is officially part of the Universal Hip Hop Museum. African Bambada is not officially part of the museum, but he is part of the museum through Mickey Benson. And this is just a completely dirty move by him. Trademark fraud, 15 U.S. Code 1120, civil liability for false or fraudulent registration. Any person who shall procure registration in the patent and trademark office of a mark by a false or fraudulent declaration or representation, oral or in writing, or by any false means shall be liable in a civil action by any person injured thereby for any damages sustained and consequences thereof. Wills realized Savage cloned the organization with his own website on March 30, and she ordered him to cease and desist. He did not. Savage and Benson 
concocted a scheme to intercept internet traffic looking for hip hop stands for survivors and to then mischaracterize the organization with disinformation, slander, half truths, lies, and false trademark, Will said in the complaint. Well, Layla Wells is seeking 10,000 from each of the eight defendants, which is the maximum Illinois small claims court will allow. Small claims court is usually the speediest of many court processes, and she believes pursuing more than 10,000 out of Ronald Savage would be fruitless. Oh, damn. Ooh, 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 ooh. She said, more than trying to seek more than 10,000 will be fruitless from Ronald Savage. In all honesty, I would say between 50 to 100K is where she should be aiming. But, you know, she knows what she's doing with the lawyers. But for all the work that she's done, she definitely deserves more than, um, I guess it would be 80,000 from all eight. Definitely needs to be 50 to 100. But, I digress, I digress. This afternoon's filing is awaiting a docket number and return date. Should there be any error that she has to correct, the case will be refiled once complete. April 25th, 2023, update. The court accepted Layla Will's case filing. Case number is 2023-13-00560. That is the case number. First hearing is June 13, 2023. Here, read the complaint here. So let's take a look. So this is the official paperwork. Okay. This is the official paperwork. How long is this? Uh, 16 pages. So it's official, the defamation case. And I don't have too many thoughts. The only thing is, it's really sad that Little Wills has to go through the court system to seek justice about this whole situation. Because if people weren't so blinded by idol worship, this whole situation with African Mimbada should have been ended a long time ago. It shouldn't have not morphed into the Universal Hip Hop Museum, into a whole entirely new situation now. It's crazy because nobody wants to hold African Mimbada accountable. I guess nobody thinks that African Mimbada can be held accountable or deserves to be held accountable. The entire hip hop community has been silent. The only thing that has come out is a statement by Fat Joe, which was disingenuous acting like he didn't know what was going on or who Layla Wills was. So, you know, for all the talk about, you know, gangsters in hip hop and this and that and being tough and everything, everybody was radio silent when this story came out. That's all I really have to say. You know, it's very, Little Wells is a very difficult situation. She doesn't have to do this. Like who wants to come out against African Mambada for the whole 44 part documentary? You have to be strong to be doing stuff like, be doing stuff like that, especially when nobody wants to. The media, with all their resources, don't want to do it. So that's why I believe she deserves more than ten thousand, um, more than eighty thousand. If she is suing eight people in total for ten thousand, definitely deserves eight hundred thousand to a million. I would say because this work is definitely priceless. But the final thing I will say, Layla Wells and everybody who continues to support the movement is on the right side of history. Might not show up now, but definitely along the line, Layla Wills will be vindicated. And it's going to be shown that, you know, child uh, youth advocates are definitely on the right side of history because it's not going to end well for the legacy of Africa Bimbara. It will not, even though it looks like 
you know, he's free and he's doing what he wants to do. There's still the civil case from John Doe in court right now. And we're going to see the reaction once he loses. We're going to see the reaction from mainstream media. We're going to see the reaction from hip hop. But I just wanted to give that update. Shout out to Layla Wells for doing the work. And shout out to anybody that's continuing on with the movement. That's all I have for this video. Stay tuned for any other updates. Check out the website. Go support in any way possible. And that's it for this video. Peace out.